What's going on guys, it's Face Simp here, and today I'm going to be breaking down how we won champs, and kind of just talking about what went through our heads while we were winning. So yeah, this is going to be a recap video, and let's just get into it. Alright, so our first round for champs was technically winner's round 2, just because we ended the season with the first overall seed out of every single team, and that gave us a first round buy, also with like, um, just the first seed. So, that was really big out of us, just because, uh, I've always been on teams where we believe that you know, the the league matches are super important just because they kind of set you up for the rest of the year. And, I mean, they technically kind of did just because, you know, champs is a lot of money. And with there only being eight teams, having that buy already makes you, like, that much further ahead. So, it was definitely big for us. And we ended up playing New York first round, which, honestly, wasn't that close of a match. So, this New York team is usually a team that keeps up. A pretty close game to us just because it's you know clay and he he knows how we kind of play just because he's you know he won champs with us in bo4 so playing them always is just a match that you know is going to be fun and is always going to be a close one just because of that kind of rivalry we have between each other first map of the new york series ended up being raid hardpoint and this is a map that honestly became one of our bread and butters throughout the year just because I think once we learned how to control, um, well, I mean, te technically at the end of the year, we kind of just learned how to play hardpoint overall. But I think on this map specifically, once we were able to hold the court hill, the P4, I think that's when we really started to get some good time and honestly started winning this map more and more. Just because uh, we kept losing garage hill every single time. And then we'd, we'd get chained from P P3 P to P4 to P5. <clears throat> and that would happen every time, and we just lose composure and get put in a trap, but we ended up learning how to hold the core hill, and with us kind of relearning how to play hardpoint, we ended up learning how to hold the garage hill as well, and kind of just make the best out of every situation, so. Uh, this map wasn't that close, we ended up winning two, 250 to 149, um, and I mean, this is just kind of expected out of us, I feel like we really went into the champs kind of uh, with the fire, so... Especially against Clay and it being our first round, we definitely were going to come out hot and just show everyone we, were, we weren't here to mess around. So after winning that raid hardpoint against New York in a pretty dominating fashion of, you know, winning 100 plus points, uh, we go we went to Miami S&D, and this is also a map that in between Major 5 and Champs, I think our search overall got really good, but I think Miami became probably one of our T2 maps just because of um, how we played it. We were doing a 2-2 split. From, on B and A, and it ended up just working a lot of the time for some reason. I mean, we kind of did it by accident in scrims, and every single round we just win. We were like six only teams in scrims, so this is a map we were super super confident on, and that was, that's another big thing. I feel like this event, I've been the most confident in myself at least ever since BO4. I feel like MW wasn't really a game I was that confident in just because I don't think it fits my playstyle that well, but. I just feel like after Major 5, we kind of had a talk, and after we all got on the same page of what we want to do, I feel like we all kind of just had that confidence where we could have done anything, and we were just, we were charging through brick walls, if that makes sense. Won that 6-3, went up 2-0 in the series, and onto control, which, I mean, we haven't lost uh, a control at least, and I mean, we didn't lose a control at all during Cold War. I mean, we were fucking, I don't even know what our record was, we were like triple, we were like a 4.0 in control like win loss so i mean we were so confident in this mode so going to map three we were gonna smoke them so yeah we went into gary control just super confident and honestly it, it wasn't that close of a map either we fucking i'm pretty sure we 3 0 would them i don't even think it was close and we just ran away with that series i feel like after the search they kind of probably mentally chalked it a little bit just because you know when when you're going down 0-2 to us and you play you, know, you have to go to a control against us for the series I mean, I don't think there are any teams, maybe besides Toronto, that were confident going into it. Just because of how good our control actually was, I feel like there wasn't anyone that really competed throughout the year unless we actually trolled. Like, um, we didn't wait for each other, or we just didn't slow down so that our lives drained too fast, but I feel like even now, we're still light years ahead in control than other teams were, so, I mean, hopefully it's a next year. After we 3 0'd them in the garrison control and we 3 0 them in the series, we ended up having to play Dallas Empire for, I think it was Grand Finals? Yeah, it was for Grand Finals. And, you know, this is a matchup that we were honestly really looking forward to, just because last year I feel like the way champs went wasn't the way we wanted to go. 
and you know even though we got second which isn't bad we we wanted to win so it definitely felt really good to kind of just come out with the fire against these guys and make a statement against them so going into the dallas empire series in winners finals we were super super confident against these guys and uh our vetoes i think were really in our favor just because of how both of our map pools kind of lined up towards the end of the year um their one of their bread and butters was garrison and we actually couldn't win a garrison for the longest time probably from like mid-ish p not p not p uh, like major four not major four like stage four to like the end of stage five i feel like maybe maybe not that early in stage four but like definitely most of major five uh stage five we couldn't really get a garrison hard point going because we'd always play too hard for the p2 and we'd always flip uh on the p3 and we'd never get any p3 time but i think towards the end of the year we kind of realized that as long as you're just making the p3 mixy and no one's really getting time you're kind of doing your job because you have the rotation for next though anyways so uh that's kind of what happened in this first map against dallas i feel like that was the big takeaway of what happened just because usually they're a team that holds the p3s and that's how they kind of get back into the game but we ended up making them not be in the hill for like 30 plus seconds on i don't know if they had two i know they had one on at least one of the p3s so being able to stop a team from getting that amount of time while also maintaining your lead is super just good for your team just because of the map pressure you're going to still have and you know you're not worried about if they're going to win off this hill you're not worried about how many points they're getting you're still worried about getting your time just because of how much of a lead you have so we ended up winning this uh garrison hard point it honestly wasn't close it wasn't it was even less close than the new york hard point uh 250 to 118 and i think that's just because we in hard point we played with such aggression towards or not towards but like at champs that I feel like there was no team that was on the same page that was as aggressive as us and there wasn't really anything anyone could do just because I feel like we were so in sync for champs that um we just knew we were doing the entire time like you know there sometimes some people are thinking different things and a lot of that has to get calm but I feel like we were really in a rhythm this event where we had a situation lined up for every single like play every single map and we didn't really have to speak it we were kind of just you know say one or two things and boom we're in it so yeah what up 1-0 after that map smoked them and on to the raid search so going into map two against dallas uh it was raid search and destroy and this was a map that was also a map we had a lot of reps on for search i think this uh was the, a map we played a lot during stage three we're honestly throughout the entire year but like midway through the year i feel like this was one of the main searches we were playing so but i will say the one thing about this search or at least overall like on this search map that a lot of teams are doing to us is when things get mixies you cannot let someone plant b like the the poolside bomb without getting a kill just because of how much um map control you need to retake the site it's almost impossible unless somebody like over peaks or gets blooded like without needing to and i mean i think both times you played dallas the last two times you played them on this map both times they let us plant b and they you know for free and when that's going to happen there's there's not not much chance that your team's going to win and you know it also doesn't help that I, I smoked two people in tiki i don't even remember who it was but someone had to get a trade and they didn't and we ended up taking that map six five it was an absolute nail biter of a search and destroy and i think this was really the the end of the series for them just because you know like i said the new york series going down 0-2 against us going into a control is something no team really wanted to do so in this rate control we i feel like we honestly should have 3-0'd them i kind of burger streaked um a lot to be honest on this map and we i think we lost an offense because of it i think if i just you know ran with somebody and just helped out instead of streaking nothing then i probably could have done more but we ended up taking this map 3-1 anyways the other three rounds honestly weren't that close but we ended up taking the series 3-0 to Dallas, and I, you know, I waved them off, and it felt good, man. Yeah, I feel like a lot of this event, I was kind of getting up and getting hype, and I just feel like, you know, with me sitting on the inside now, it was definitely my job to do that, but I don't know. It just, it felt good to be able to, like, be back in that element, because when I used to go to, like, NJ Raws and ETGs, like, the East Coast locals, then, it, you know, I used to do that a lot with, like, um, Rafizi and all them, because they used to, those guys used to be my guys back in the day, so definitely felt good to kind of have that feeling again, and... It's just fun because you know you know you're gonna you see this little dude screaming at you you're probably getting pissed off because there's not much you can do because he's just gunning you so it, de it definitely felt really nice and you know took that series 3-0 went into finals waiting to play someone and then someone ended up being toronto ultra all right so going to moscow hardpoint ma map one um we kind of 
I don't, I don't know what we were really expecting. I feel like we were going to come out with the fire. But, you know, you're going in kind of cold, uh, like teamwork-wise. So, you, you couldn't really expect much. And, honestly, I feel like this map overall was just a good thing for us. Because, you know, got it out of the way. And we were just like, yep, no no teamwork. We had we had zero rotations because we kept dying on every single, like, hold. Like, the hill would pop and we die instantly and spawn out. And we still only lost by 75 points. So if we were doing that on a map like Moscow where it's basically all rotational based, then we were confident we were still going to gun our way through the series and that we should need to get our fundamentals up just a little bit. So after losing that Moscow hard point 250 to 175, we ended up playing uh, Express S&D. This Express S&D went back and forth. Um, there weren't really many standout rounds that I can think of off the top of my head right now. Um, personally, I feel like I couldn't really do much the first couple maps. Like Moscow hard point, I got mega smoked. I didn't, I didn't say it because honestly, I forgot until now. But I was like triple negative, like one of the worst, I think the worst hard point I've ever played. And we still only lost by 75 points. So definitely a scary, scary map. I feel like if we lost this map, um, we might not have won the series. Just because last map was Moscow hard point and who knows what would happen in the map nine. But another thing I, another thing I will say about this express is that there was one round where Ben almost clutched up on a MC. And he, he was li literally like a pixel away from getting this defuse, and I think that ended up costing them the map. Which he didn't really cost, but it was kind of just like not getting that defuse off. So it's definitely crazy to think about how the series could have went, but you know, thank god it went this way. So going into map 3 was raid control, and you know, this is another control war we're just disgusting at. But Toronto was pretty good at this map. Um... I feel like overall they weren't the best control team, but they were the one that had they did have some of the best teamwork in the game. So I feel like it definitely made them scary at times just because of um how decisive they were on the map together and just kind of how like similar they kind of played to us at times. But we took the aggression to them this map. And honestly, we just ended up 3-0 smoking them. I think the first offense, we were literally in their base, all three of us, just literally just going to pound town, just spawn trapping, getting streaks. I don't even know what was going on. Actually, I don't even know if we got streaks, but it, it wasn't close if you ask me. And I feel like this was a really good map, like really good statement map for us just because, uh, you know, we were gunning our way through them and it showed. So up to one going on to raid hardpoint. This raid hardpoint was also something that we were super confident going into just because I feel like after that Express SD, we kind of got our confidence into the series. And especially in the raid control, I, I started shooting. I started. Bleh, I started shooting straight again. And I think, I don't know if anyone else was even getting chill on, but I think we were all just in cheeks. So, after that raid control, we went to the raid hard point, just super, super confident. And we ended up 100 point clubbing, smoking them on this map. I think I saw a tweet somewhere where it was one of the top three worst losses on this map. And that's super surprising because raided hard points would usually want to try those better hard points. So, going to this Miami search, we were super confident just because it was one of our bread and butters for the event. But I think we were also kind of uh, aware that this was one of Toronto's. Uh, maps that kind of catches off guard because Miami was always a map that if we didn't realize the pace people were playing then people were going to catch us off guard so it's one of those weird maps but honestly we kind of just got smoked this map we ended up losing this map 2-6 and I don't think there were really that many rounds that we should have won I feel like they were kind of just taking advantage a lot of the time winning they were getting a lot of bloods and just working the map really well together so there wasn't much we could really do about this and we ended up just losing 2-6 and now the series is 3-2 going into a garrison control. And this map was crazy. So this garrison control, we were actually super confident going into because, you know, our control game was really, really good. And especially after 3-0-ing them on the re-control, we thought we were just going to come in here, 3-0 speed run them, and kind of just be on to the next map. But it actually ended up being the opposite. I mean, we went down 0-2 in like two minutes. Not two minutes, like three, three and a half probably. And... I think a big part of that was our break on offense. I think we kind of changed it for like a second. And it kind of got weird. And we didn't touch points. And we got put into a demon trap. Which happens to a lot of teams. And when people put you in demon traps. And they're actually working really well together. It's super hard to break out of it. Especially when we weren't really on point uh, that round. I feel like we were kind of splitting up different ways. And even in our comms. You know we were kind of just saying like. Alright let's go together. Like make sure we're doing stuff together. And we kind of just kept uh, separating. So. When you're in a, an offensive trap like that, it's you're not going to get out unless you go together. I don't know what clicked. I don't know what happened. But we ended up winning that the next offense. MC got full streaks. 
someone, I think Alec got streaks too on the next defense by getting a kill. And we had ended up getting two sets of full streaks after putting them into a demon trap on that defense and going round five. So this was super beneficial for us because even then, uh, we were talking about it. We wanted offense, honestly, because I feel like offense on Garrison, especially, you can curve the cruise missiles really well to make sure you're, you can get on a point. And this is something not a lot of teams did. I feel like not a lot of teams really know how to cruise the, uh, the cruise missile a lot. Just because um, of BO4. BO4 was kind of the same way. And we've all practiced it. Like me, Alec, and Tyler all practiced it on the United like we all did. And we all know how to uh, curve the cruise missile. So it was definitely something that not a lot of teams took advantage of. And also the, the next map we were going into was Apocalypse Hardpoint. Which was honestly our best hardpoint throughout the entire year. It just didn't show it in matches, so. So we ended up actually getting good side on this map, but honestly, we didn't really like good side on Apocalypse Side Point. Uh, our, our stats, I feel like, or at least our confidence was a lot better on bad side. And that's just because I feel like our P1s were a lot better on bad side than they were on the P2 sides. And when you just worry about the P1, the hill you're currently playing, you're going to end up spawning people out anyways. And I feel like that was one of the biggest keys for us um, towards the end of the year of playing Hardpoint. I feel like we just started playing through the hill. And just, you know, loosening up and playing with some confidence. And I feel like no one was ever really messing with us at hardpoint after that. Even in the scrims, you know, we were kind of brushing stuff off before Major 5. But then after Major 5, there wasn't even teams that were, like, really winning anything in scrims against us. But this Apocalypse hardpoint, we ended up playing on good side. And we ended up losing the break and getting flipped instantly, which, you know, usually is a bad thing. But for a team like us, I feel like it was a good thing. Because, you know, we're way better at the later hills, like 3, 4, 5. And we're really going to chain those together, so even if we're able to get any scrap times off the P1 or P2, it is really good for us. And I think we ended up getting the, the later end of the P1 after they flipped us. You know, if you can just get time on those hills that aren't going to be your main money hills, then that's just beneficial. Especially if you're just keeping them off the time as long as they can, like, like on Garrison P3s, then you're going to be doing a really good job of just, you know, gaining a lead while also maintaining it. We ended up winning champs on this map. We won 250, 147, and I think Cell went off this map. He was he was showing off nerd spots behind, like uh, in bench. We call it bench that back room. Like uh, you can shoot through the back wall or whatever. Um, we knew that one for a while. I don't think anyone really used it though. And I mean, he just went off, you know. And I, I'm really glad he went off. I feel like he had a really good event, and I know he really wanted to win this champs MC just because of how we lost last year. You know, it was he never really had a chance at a ring until last year. And the way we lost wasn't fun, so it definitely felt good to be able to get our vengeance and be able to get a ring back. So we have two rings now, man. This shit is crazy. And whenever I do get the rings, I'll probably make an unboxing for whatever they send me. Um, I'm sure I'll be uploading stuff to my Twitter. I'm sure you guys follow me. But yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what they're gonna be sending me for the champs kit. I know there's a champs kit, but I'll, I'll try to make an unboxing video, a quick little thing, just because of. You know, it's cool. I, 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 hopefully you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, like, you know, the ring's probably going to look super cool. So that's going to be this video, guys. We won champs, man. I'm officially the two-time, two-time, three-time. The two-time, three-time. Oh, shit. I'm the two-time, three-time, boys. But that's going to be for me. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will probably make... I don't know what, I don't know what videos I'm going to be making in the offseason, but I'm going to figure it out. I might make some recaps on some of the Roster Mania stuff going on. Um... I might upload whatever game I'm playing. I'm going to try and stream more, though. And I might just try and upload highlights, so. Let me know in the comments what you guys think uh, I should be uploading. Because, especially if I don't play, like, anything Call of Duty. Let me know what non-Call of Duty stuff you'd prefer. But, uh, that's going to be for me. I appreciate all of you guys who've supported me throughout this entire year. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.